So today for Goals Question Time, I've got the pleasure of being joined by Bill Yeo. Hi, Bill. Hi. How are you, Andrew? Very good, Bill. Very good, Bill. We um we met at an AgriTech uh, venture event and that in Oxford Harwell and that uh, a few months back. So it's great to be yes. uh, in contact with you again. So yes, could you pleasure to be off, here. Could you kick off and introduce yourself first, please, and we get into the detail. Sure. Uh, I am a global citizen. Uh, worked and lived all around the world. I currently am a general partner at SOSV, and I co-founded the Indie Bio program back in 2014. Um, and in that first batch, we had companies like Perfect Day, you know, that make milk without cows, and a bunch of other amazing unicorns that that uh, made it a very good first batch. Uh, we're now one of the most prolific life science investors in the world. Um, I'm also an advisor to a New Zealand fund called AgriZero, which is dedicated to funding startups that reduce the uh, carbon emissions and methane emissions of agriculture to nothing. Um, and then I'm also chair of Kitua Fund, which is a uh, food as medicine fund. Um, that's a CVC owned by Fonterra. Uh, at, we do have a lot of dry powder and we also have a normal VC mandate for a significant portion of the fund. So we're actually acting as a normal VC for most of it, uh, and also an LP. Uh, and uh, on top of all that, I've got a couple of charities that I've funded that are global. We Forest planted uh, 82 million odd trees, funded 100 million trees. Uh, Coda Dojo, which is now part of Raspberry Pi Foundation, the largest network of free coding clubs for kids. Uh, and on top of all that, uh, I have actually co-founded and taken co public a couple of billion dollar startups. So I've seen it all from every angle. <laughs> Amazing, Bill. Amazing. I'm not sure where to start with all of that. I better go back down the checklist again. You seem to be very purpose driven in what you're doing and the organizations you're in. So what <clears throat> so what's the, the strategic driver for, for, for you and the funds and that you're involved with? What's some of the key things that are running through that, do you think? So that's a I actually I think a common mistake people make is that they think that strategy drives purpose. Uh, and it's actually the other way around. So many years ago, I I looked at the what makes life meaningful. And honestly, the best answer I could find um, looking deeply into philosophy is that life has no meaning other than the meaning you make. And one of the most meaningful things you can make is purpose. Uh, and so my purpose in life is a world that works for all living things while civilization thrives. Right. And all of my strategic and tactical decisions are actually driven by that purpose rather than the other way around. And my purpose is grounded in values. Uh, and like some of my favorite values are kindness, curiosity, and getting shit done. Yeah, amazing. Right. Okay. Getting getting that shit done perspective. What's the process you go through then when you're seeing ventures, when they knock on your door at SOSV or at your funds? What's the process you go through for to, to give up guidance to these entrepreneurs? So if they just knock on my door cold, I'm probably going to pass. Um just because they haven't put the work in if they're just sending me a cold email. Like finding my name on a list, that's easy. And that doesn't prove that you have any care for what our investment considerations are. Uh, and that's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, a good relationship in any between any two people or any two businesses is founded on mutual understanding and trust. And so just kicking down my door is not really a great way to do either of those things. Yeah. So, you know, one of the processes that I highly recommend people do is that they look at similar businesses to their own that are one stage later. So if they're series seed, look at people who have already raised their series A because most investors are kind of stage bound. Yeah, they might follow on, but they don't lead in, in and, you know, they've got a sweet spot that they lead in. Yeah. So somebody's raised a series A in your field like somewhere somewhere adjacent, 
the investors invested their money. They might have some follow on, but you know that that investor is interested in the space. Yeah. Well, go to that company and seek out the the C suite, especially the CFO, and say, "Hey, um, can you give me some advice? You were very successful raising at at Series A from these investors. Yeah. You know, how would how could I get into that? What should I make my deck look like? You know, is there someone there that I should be approaching? And after you've got lots of advice, you might even be able to ask, hey, would you mind giving me an intro? Yeah, yeah. And if I, if one of my portfolio companies that I'm invested in and I'm happy with says, hey, I've, you know, I've met this other slightly younger company that's looking to do a similar sort of round. It's in an adjacent space. You know, it's not a competitor to ours. But it might be interesting knowing what you like to invest in, Bill. I mean, that really shows that somebody's put the work in, that they're interested, they've, they've identified us as a, a relevant investor and it's not just spray and pray. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be a meeting I take. Like there, there is no doubt you yeah, you know, they get the meeting for that investment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a master class in networking and getting to know and uh, and and it it, it doesn't you asked work. about process. That, that's perfect. That's perfect. You know, it's <laughs> and and it it really helps to not waste your time and not waste the entrepreneur's time because I very much agree that, yeah, if you haven't done your research and you're not investing in the right sort of sector or in the right sort of stage, you know, you're just wasting your time and time is limited for entrepreneurs. So just, you know, do that bit of legwork and all that. You're, you're not just wasting your time. You're also wasting critical motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, you you know, everybody has a certain level of nose that they can tolerate yeah, yeah. <laughs> before they have to go down the pub. And if you just spray and pray, you're going to get the worst than nose. You're going to get like yeah. if you send a thousand random emails to investors, you're probably going to get one response and it's probably going to be no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. very disheartening. Whereas yeah. if you get warm introductions from people who've already had money from these investors and who know them you, you know your success rate is going to go way up you're going to feel much more motivated you're going to learn a lot more about the kinds of investors that are investing in your sector it's just it's all good there's there's no downside <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so people are so so important and central to these sort of things so in, in terms of then if if they get they've, they've got the introduction they've got through your door what is it you're looking for in the person that's going to be running this venture and you're going to be working with and that with you know in the ones you're you're investing in? Um, that it's not the person running the <laughs> the you know, the people plural is yeah the first test, even at the accelerator pre-stage stage. Yeah. Um if you as a startup founder cannot convince at least one other human to follow you passionately. Why should I give you any money? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then yeah, the the best possible. I mean, we're deep tech investors, so the best possible combination I've seen is uh, where the team has both the ability to hustle and has deep scientific knowledge and has the ability to build things. So you know, there's there's a a dynamic tension there, right? Because if it's all hustle and no science, then you get Theranos. If it's all science and no hustle, well, you get the story of most academic spin-outs that never go anywhere. And if you have the deep tech and you have the hustle and there's no activity in building, then the traction, you never get product market fit. So you really need those three buckets filled. And if you don't have those three, then you need to either build that muscle yourself in one of the buckets or you've got to find someone who'll believe in you enough to follow on and bring that strength to the table. Yeah. Um, and it's hard. This is the, the hardest thing in the world is finding people. And I will give one piece of killer advice here. Founder vesting agreements. Yeah. yeah. Essentially prenups for, for, for startups. You know, every bad team situation I've ever seen has had either no founding vesting agreement or one that's expired too soon or one that's got no teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you've got to keep everybody on the same page that if they stop pulling their weight, they're going to give up their equity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I I agree with that 100%. I've been through a number of ventures as a founder and investor, and 
also we've got caught out by that but also in the more recent ones i've had <clears throat> we've had proper founder agreements and you can get you can sort the stuff out relatively quickly and relatively amicably because you had those discussions and that pre pre the situation so i'd, I'd reiterate what you're saying there but i very much agree it's also a good test of how persuasive you've been like if people are negotiating hard on their founder vesting, that's a very good signal to you as CEO that they're believers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, great point, great point. So moving into discussion forward, we've talked about your purpose, we've talked about the process, talked about the people, partnerships, and who else you're involving in your value chain and sort of stuff like that. Maybe you could give some examples of how you're building this sort of ecosystem or value chain and maybe examples from some of your ventures like perfect day or sort of something like that, because you can't just, you can't just create milk you know, or a milk alternative without understanding in the, in the value chain. Maybe, maybe give us some examples, of those partnership importance of that. Yeah. I, I mean, we live in a world where you cannot do it all anymore. Like if you were to pick up, um, you know, a computer mouse, no single human in the world could make all the components of that mouse. Mm -hmm. There's supply chain, there's logistics, there's design, there's material sourcing, there's repairs, there's engineering, there's silicon, there's circuit boards, there's plastic molding, there's sustainability, there's legal, like just to make a computer mouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you go around and you look for partners who you can get enthusiastic about what you're doing, they can underwrite all sorts of things that you're doing. So, um, you know, in the case of some of our big fermentation companies like Perfect Day, finding a fermentation partner who has already invested in enormous, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of steel tanks so that you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, finding a sales and distribution partner so that you can build your ingredient into existing products or into adjacent products that they are already selling so that you can get to revenue faster. Um, one of the great powers of our uh, accelerator programs at SOSV is that you actually go into the program with a batch of contemporaries and you all go through the same sort of pains at the same time and you form these long-term founder-to-founder relationships. And just having the right advice at the right time from a fellow founder or one of their advisors can be an incredibly powerful partnership. Yeah. And then when it comes to getting investment, unlike grants where honestly you don't get much partnership, you, you really get the money and some surveillance, your investors should be great partners. They should be help assisting you to get the next round done. They should be giving you the benefit of their wisdom and their market intelligence and you know not just following up on you actually assisting you to thrive and i know it's saying you know they have to be exactly super smart money or anything i'm just saying they should be considered a partner and you should be walking together shoulder to shoulder because that investment relationship may be 5 10 15 years long yeah that's a partnership as far as i'm concerned i mean that outlasts many of today's marriages right yeah 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 yeah, yeah no def definitely the case I i'd be interested in your perspective on this new way this technology that's coming through now artificial intelligence gen ai because that to me that's going to be an your know, partnership's going to be important to that you know which llms you're going to use who's the software partner you're going to work with who are you going to work with to get your head around how business models are going to change but you've got perspective on that on on, on AI and how it's impacting startups and corporates. Yeah, I, I think that the current crop of generative AI is a significant improvement in the user interface. Like the, the, the technology itself is not new. And we've had language models, we've had machine learning for a long, long time. It's just that we've never had it in, at the balance point where the average human uh, can access that level of generative AI uh, for peanuts, or if if not free, and that's and in a way that is so easy to understand that that yeah, literally anyone who can read or write for now mm -hmm. <laughs> can do it. Soon will be there'll be really good 
you know, voice interfaces. I, I mean, yeah, the the uh, S's and A's and, and GA's of this world, you could talk to, they certainly at the moment cannot uh, really, they, they're not connected to a very good engine to understand and help and assist you to create. There's a lot of people who've put out a shingle saying, hey, I know how to do this better than everyone else. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a lot of pick and shovel salespeople that, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, it, it is easy enough to use that you can figure it out yourself, and you should. Um, and people who are kind of anti it are a bit like the people who, who back in the late 80s said no 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 you've got to handwrite the letter you can't use a word processor yeah, yeah. <laughs> um hmm. it reminds me of my high school math teacher who told me no no you have to do all mental arithmetic because you won't be able to have a calculator with you wherever you go i yeah, beg to give yeah. a flashes apple watch yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um it's the same sort of thing you, you, you know we we overvalue the wrong kinds of effort and so you really need to just dive into these generative tools and, and start using them. They're tremendously powerful for every aspect of your business. You know, you do your spreadsheet, you upload it to it and say, hey, check these numbers for me. It'll do it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, you, you, you've got a tricky situation with an employee that you've got to write them a, a, a pointed letter. Run it past them and uh, run it past the AI and say, hey, I want to make sure that I don't cross any legal boundaries here. Yeah, um, yeah. It'll do it. And it'll do a better job than than most HR specialists. Yeah, I yeah. think I think the people who should be really worried about this are the ones who that was their job. Yeah, they yeah, need yeah, to start yeah. upskilling fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 and finding where their value point is because it's not reading yeah. through dull documents and trying to find trying to find the, those those sort of points now because as you said, the AI can do that that straight out of the box and that for you pretty after a little bit of um, training yourself. Great. That and, and that training you can get by literally going onto one of their websites and saying, please teach me how to use you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, uh, and you can even, uh, one of the prompts I like is, please pretend I'm a moron. Teach me how to use you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. No, you get some very interesting answers. <laughs> yeah, no, very, yeah, no, I've, I've had so many wow moments in terms of those interactions and giving it images to describe and getting it to create images and, and doing. Well, one thing I will say is just because there's an AI bandwagon doesn't make everything to do with AI a business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like just as having an app is not the same as having a business. Yeah. yeah See, so, yeah. you know, I get a lot of people saying, Oh, I've got an app that does this. And I'm like, great. Yeah. It's and... just another tool. Yeah. It's just another calculator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, are you going to turn that into a business? Are you great? Who's going to pay for it? How many? Like, how are you going to rise above? How are you going to become visible? There's, there's, yeah. there's so much more than just the tool itself. So uh, a, there's a lot of oh, people are getting funded in AI. I could do that going on, which is no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're going to move through this phase pretty pretty quickly, where everybody's going to be an AI business going forward. Yeah. You, you can't just sort of say I'm AI. It's like you know. Everybody uses electricity. Everybody uses word processors. Everybody's on the exactly. internet. It's like no, it's just AI is just another tool. But just move on. So, Bill, yeah. great. I, I'd like to get to the bottom of what do you think of your performance measures. You know, you talked about your purpose driven in, in some of the areas in, in what you do and and that. So, so what what is good performance for you in your ventures? Is it just an IRR or what's the broader things you're looking for? So most people don't understand measurement. Yeah, measurement has distance, it has time, and it has form. So it is, has the form that you're measuring over time, and it has dimensionality to it. And a lot of people just don't even look. Uh, so um, one of the interesting things, I became a type 2 diabetic, and I have a continuous glucose monitor. And the difference between finger prick monitoring and continuous monitoring is just night and day in terms of blood sugar control, because you could see your reactions to things. Right. And so similarly, if you're a CEO and you only look at your PL once a month when your accountant prepares it, good luck. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah. If you don't know your cash balance every evening, if you don't understand why your cash balance is what it is every evening as a CEO, you think that you think you're like your CFO should be doing that? You're insane. Mm-hmm. Straight up. If you cannot get to grips with these basic numbers and these basic measures, not going to work. And then in terms of a fund, you know, we have to look at um, you know, the multiple on investment in capital. You know, we have to look at ultimately though our distributions overpaid in capital. And in the case of our strategic fund, we also have to look at the increase in the parent company's PL from our strategic benefit work. So these are hard concrete numbers. In terms of environmental impact, you've got to look at gigatons of CO2 equivalent sequestered or avoided. And if you're not able to track down the measures and you're not able to show objectively what you've what your impact has been, good luck. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, it's all very well to talk a good fight, but it's actually number of times the glove hits the face <laughs> that tells you, you know, or, or hits the gut that tells you whether you're actually a good fighter or not, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I was uh, talking to a, a young startup fellow who was also doing his, his uh, first MMA fight, and I said, listen, the rules for MMA and the rules for a startup are exactly the same. Don't die, don't quit, and don't suck at what you do. And, right. <laughs> And, and the only way you can know whether you suck or not is to measure the hell out of everything. Right, right. Oh, Bill, that that has been a fantastic I think, master course. And the anecdotes and the, the perspective you've got has been great. Thanks for sharing it with me and thanks for sharing it with our uh, our audience. You're very welcome, Andrew. And, and I hope everyone reads your book. Thank you. The book is Purpose to Performance, Innovative New Value Chain. Please subscribe to future interviews and give us a five-star like.